number 10, getting away from drama in the family. As an American non-royal, there are lots of things to think about before marrying a prince. In a shocking interview that she and Prince Harry gave to Oprah Winfrey in 2021, Meghan Markle said that she knew very little about the royal family before joining them. She stated in the interview, I went into it naive because I didn't grow up knowing much about the royal family. She went on to say that the reason she was clueless was that she hadn't thought to look up the family online, which she was actually grateful for. Meghan and Harry moved into a cottage in Kensington Palace with Prince William and Duchess Kate after their wedding in May 2018. The couple announced their intention to relocate to Windsor's Frogmore Cottage a few months later, which now they're getting kicked out of. Their justification was that they wanted to keep baby Archie's upbringing private. However, a lot of people suspected that the couples were at odds. The fact that the two brothers, William and Harry, had shared home for a decade before moving is especially significant. Number nine, Fab Four Split. Fans of the royal family were under the impression that the Fab Four would continue to collaborate with one another through their shared charity, the Royal Foundation, even though their homes had split. However, the Sussexes and the Cambridges announced in June 2019 that they would be leaving their joint office. Definitely, this confirmed suspicions that the couples did not get along. They gave the foundation the new name, the Royal Foundation of the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge and Buckingham Palace so that Meghan and Harry would start a new charity foundation called Sussex Royal. When Meghan and Harry set up their own official Instagram account, it sparked rumors of a breakup. They shared an account with William and Kate in the past. The couple wrote this in their very first post. We are eager to discuss the work that inspires us, the causes we support, significant announcements, and the chance to highlight significant issues. What do you think? Meghan has been accused of being the cause of the brother's breakup. Is Meg the OG creator of the royal drama? Share your thoughts in the comment section. Number eight, eyes on Harry. Before Meghan Markle met Prince Harry and became friends with A-list celebrities such as George and Amal Clooney, Serena Williams, and Oprah Winfrey, she was a minor American TV actress, struggling for notice on red carpets and for her next big professional opportunity. That is according to self-identified former friends in the British media who claimed that her meeting Prince Harry was no accident. These ex-friends also said that Meghan had become frustrated with how her career was proceeding in Hollywood. A self-described Anglophile, Meghan began thinking about 2013 that the United Kingdom might be the place for her to be, an idea that eventually allowed her to maneuver into the right social circles where she and Harry would cross paths. These friends say she told me she wanted to be on an English reality TV show and that she wanted an English boyfriend, said British TV presenter Lizzie Kundi. Number seven, Harry and Meghan. This tell-all docuseries that delves into the personal lives of the couple and their experiences at the royal castle, which they felt was mandatory to share with the rest of the world, followed because the backlash from the interview did not appear to do anything for Meghan and Harry. To be clear, this sparked just as much, if not more, backlash, with more people questioning why the couple continues to share so many intimate details when they say they want to keep their private lives out of the media spotlight. Since it doesn't appear that the royal inheritances are enough to keep their family stable, many people have wondered if this couple dropped this Netflix miniseries to make extra money. What would be better than milking the story of the royal family and exposing them for money? Although the couple doesn't have the best reputation among many people, it's clear that the royal family didn't appreciate the couple's efforts to draw more attention to themselves and give them a bad rep. It's all personal. The British media and their attempts to split the royal family were then obviously Harry's next target. In the third episode of the show, Harry talks about the role that royal correspondents, who work for newspapers and tabloids and specialize in covering and analyze the royal family, play in the British media. He described them as an extended PR arm of the royal family. An agreement has been in place for more than 30 years. Harry claims in the documentary that he was followed by paparazzi 30 or 40 times as a child, particularly while he was in school. He stated that the tabloid media in the UK believes the royal family is ours to exploit. Their trauma is our narrative and they control it. In the first episode, Harry says that as a member of the royal family, he has the responsibility to expose how British tabloids operate. I feel like a member of this family and it is my duty to expose the exploitation and bribery in our media. Harry, you aren't a working member of the royal family, but it seems like you've joined the tabloids to take advantage of the royals as well. But is that just a coincidence? On to number six, exposing the royals. Meghan has been scathing about Prince Harry's family now that she is not an official member of the royal family. 
What was the palace's real life like? The Americans said it was a little frosty. Markle claims that there was a lack of warmth at royal family gatherings, and she finds all of this standoffish behavior very strange. Kate, her sister-in-law, appears to be the most responsible of this behavior. As an American, Meg cannot understand the way that nobody hugs, which is clearly a really big deal for her. Even during the documentary, Megan mentioned that when Will and Kate came over, they did hug each other. But that shouldn't be a big deal. She claims that the tension could be cut with a knife and that it is obvious that Kate and William do not approve of their choices. The royal family has been the subject of conflicting rumors for some time now. However, in 2019, when Markle served as a guest editor for the September issue of British Vogue, this negative narrative really took root. Middleton was not included on the list of female forces for change that was featured in her issue. She also stated that it would have been arrogant for her to appear on the cover despite the fact that Kate did so in 2016. Is Kate being snubbed by Meg? It appears that whatever divided these two from each other is gonna continue for some time. On to number five, using Harry for money. The engagement interview between Meghan and Harry was broadcast by numerous networks worldwide. When Sky News in Britain broadcast it live, comments began to pour in and not all of them wished the couple well. In fact, numerous insults were leveled against Meghan, accusing her of being in it for money. There was a lot of racist trolling and allegations that she was acting inappropriately during the interview. One person wrote, she sees British pound signs. Another person wrote, she won the lottery. She won't give a crap anymore when she has that money. According to the Daily Mail, when Meghan and Harry announced the name and details of their new foundation, they hadn't finished registering for their website, so someone else took it. Additionally, that individual did something awful. The Sussexes provided the Telegraph with a few specifics regarding the foundation. The Greek word for source of action, Arch, came before Sussex Royal. They told the newspaper, we were inspired to name our son after this concept for the charitable organization we hoped to establish one day. An obvious insult to Megan was the fact that a hacker registered archwellfoundation.com and redirected it to a YouTube video of Kanye West's Gold Digger. That's some good trolling right there. Although it is now fixed, it's kind of sad that someone would turn something that is focusing on positive change into an embarrassing joke. Number four, using Harry for status. Pierce Morgan, a morning show host, has been one of Meghan's most outspoken critics claiming that she dumped him as a friend when she started dating Harry. However, I believe he may be confusing acquaintance with friend. Regardless, Pierce tweeted, Meghan used Harry to get to the top when the couple left in January. People say that I'm being too harsh on Meghan Markle, but she broke up with her parents, most of her old friends, the royal family, and her family. She has also split William from Harry. I'm finished arguing, said Pierce. In addition, he tweeted, what a pair of repugnant, deluded, and narcissistic tools. Yikes. On to number three, toxic for Harry. Experts warned that Meghan Markle is peddling Prince Harry's newly formed and deeply damaging anti-royal beliefs. That is what royal author Tom Bower told American journalist Megyn Kelly. He began by calling the American very clever and went on to say, don't think for a second that she's not convincing quite a lot of people, especially in America, Africa, the Caribbean, and elsewhere that somehow she was given to the wild animals. Naturally, that is not the case at all. Mr. Bower also questioned the they in Meghan Markle's claims that she was fed to the wolves, asking who is they throughout the course of his interview, who actually put them in the hands of the wild, who in fact was unwilling to speak the truth on their behalf. Miss Kelly intervened at this point in the conversation, claiming that she believes that they've already telegraphed they is the royal family. In the first three episodes, Harry comes out and says that stories have been planted as well as leaked from the palace. In addition, he is fully prepared to assert in the subsequent three episodes that the palace and its staff, courtiers or whatever, were fabricating false information about him and her. When she says, they threw me to the wolves or they fed me to the wolves, I believe she means that clearly. Number two, family dispute. Meg conceals a lot of the embarrassing drama with her own family and former friends. Her older half-brother Thomas Markle Jr. has stated that he is at his lowest point in life and that his sister's fame has cost him his job and his home. After being evicted from his rental home in Grants Pass, Oregon, Markle Jr. is now living in a small hotel room with his fiance, her son, and their two dogs. In an interview with The Sun, Markle Jr. stated that being referred to as Megan's crazy brother has prevented him from finding a new residence or job. Additionally, he attributed his demise to his sister's global fame. In the past, the half-siblings have voiced their disapproval of Meghan in the media and asserted that she avoids family and friends when she believes they are of no use to her. 
The relationship between Markle Jr. and his sister has been difficult for some time. Samantha and Markle Jr. have been called opportunists by Meghan's fans who want to profit from her fame. However, Markle Jr. claims that he has been living under a microscope ever since Meghan's engagement to Prince Harry in 2017 and that the negative attention brought on by his sister's fame has prevented him from finding employment or a new place to live. Despite the strained relationship between Meghan and her half-siblings, it is evident that the Duchess of Sussex's fame has had an impact on their lives and drawn both positive and negative attention to them. While Meghan and her family reside in opulence at Windsor Castle, her half-brother is struggling to survive and locate a stable home. It is unknown whether Meghan and her half-siblings will ever reconcile and mend the relationship. In her new book, The Diary of Princess Pushy's Sister Part 1, Samantha, Meghan Markle's half-sister, makes some controversial assertions regarding the Duchess of Sussex. Sam asserts that the royal is demanding, belittling, and controlling, and she allegedly does not express gratitude to their father Thomas Markle for his financial assistance. Instead of expressing gratitude for the things she received from their father, Markle is alleged to have acted in a controlling manner. Despite the book's negative portrayal of Meghan and Prince Harry, Samantha claims that it was not written with the intention of attacking her sister or in-laws. It's important to remember that Samantha Markle once made comments about her half-sister that made the news. She has spoken out in the media about her strained relationship with Meghan and made statements about the royal family that have generated controversy. However, it is unknown how much weight these most recent claims will carry in light of Samantha's previous actions. Despite this, it is very clear that the Markle family has been the subject of some drama and controversy, and it appears that this most recent revelation will only serve to advance the story that is already taking place. Finally, on to number one, warning for the media outlets. A lot of observers are assuming that Harry and Meghan and have something to hide by fighting so hard against the media at this inopportune time. They have completely wiped out any positive publicity they received from their trip to Africa. They suggest that Meghan and Harry are attempting to alert the media in advance that they are willing to face legal action in the event that a significant story emerges. But the Sussexes have a lot of followers so it's easy to guess what they might be trying to suppress. What's your opinion? Is she trying to hide something? Starting off the top 10, one of the most surprising reveals has to be their nicknames for each other. In the docuseries, the Duke and Duchess refer to each other as their first initials H and M. I love it. It's short and sweet and to the point. Other names that were brought up were Has, which Meghan apparently picked up from the friend who introduced them. And we also learned that the Duchess's friends and family mostly call her Meg. So days before the royal wedding, when she was receiving texts from her hospitalized father, she realized the texts must have been written from someone else because the texts refer to her as Megan rather than Meg. So fun fact, Miss Markle's first name is actually Rachel, which funny enough was also her name on the hit TV series Suits. The docuseries doesn't address why she prefers her middle name. Megan isn't the only one who goes by a name separate from her birth name. The prince's first name isn't Harry, and it's not his son's middle name Harrison either. It's Henry. And now I'm very interested as to why this couple decided to go by names different from their birth names. And I wonder if they're going to talk about it in the second part of the series. Henry and Rachel have a very different ring to it than Harry and Meghan, don't you think? Coming in number 9, another royal detail that's been exposed in the docuseries is their oldest child, Archie's accent. We don't see much of Archie and none of his younger sister Lilibet. As someone who's in the spotlight quite a bit, it's good to know they've managed to keep their children away from all the press and drama. The three-year-old appears a few times in the first episode. He's seen riding around on a wheeled suitcase pushed by his sweatpants-wearing father, outside visiting chickens and donkeys, and wearing a birthday hat and sitting in a high chair that's covered with a scattering of confetti. He speaks only briefly, and although they moved to LA within the first year of having him, it seems that Archie does still have a British accent. It's cute to see that just because they've moved out of London, they still make sure their children stay in touch with the culture and even speak with the accent. In number 8, Meghan tried to find out more about Prince Harry on the gram. In this day and age, we try to learn more about someone by checking their socials. But when it comes to someone as international as Prince Harry, you'd expect girls to be Googling him to learn more about him, right? Meghan famously said that she didn't Google the prince before the first date. She admits to having done her research on him by lurking on his Instagram account to try to get to know who he is. Luckily for him, his feed at the time was filled with photos of animals in Africa and beautiful scenery. That was enough to convince her to give him a first date. Her reasoning for jumping to his own personal account instead of going to Google was because she wanted to know how he presents himself rather than what other people have to say about him. 
Touche Meg. The seventh reveal we got was how they first met and their official first date story. We find out that Harry and Meg met over Instagram when Harry stumbled upon a video of a mutual friend with Meghan using the dog filter. He ended up reaching out to the friend who let Meghan know the prince had an eye on her and was interested in getting to know her. So shout out to the friend who set them up. We would not be here talking about this royal series if it wasn't for them. The date was held at a members only club in London and Meghan was considering ditching him after the first date because he showed up 30 minutes late. Not a great look for Harry, but once he showed up and she saw how embarrassed and apologetic he was, she ended up giving him another chance. Imagine she didn't. Their next day was two days later at the same place and ironically, this time she was five minutes late because she had been at Wimbledon that day and needed to shower before they met up. Still not as bad as being 30 minutes late, but it's clear that they really enjoyed each other's presence and didn't let that get in the way of getting to know each other. We also find out that Harry had an extensive list of what he was looking for in a partner, but wouldn't share it saying that Megan is the list. I must admit that is a really cute response, but I'm definitely still curious about this list. We've come so far from them meeting on the gram through a friend to spending the rest of their lives together. On to number six, the royal family reveals question mark? So far the couple isn't exactly dishing about other members of the family, which is probably wise if they want to keep up those relationships. But Harry did say there's pressure on the male royals to marry someone who will fit the mold of what a royal wife is expected to be, rather than choose the person they're destined to be with. Now this may not come as a shock to many because of how important politics are within the royals, but I just can't imagine having to marry someone who's more fit for the family rather than a person you feel fits better into your own personal life. Harry really went against the grain and went searching for someone who he believed would fit into his life. Props to him for choosing different. He mentions that some of the family members didn't feel sympathy for Meghan being hunted by paparazzi because their wives also had to go through that. Though Harry says Meghan's situation was different because of racism towards her. Although a lot of people might not agree with his decision, at the end of the day it's his life to live and he is allowed to live with the decisions he makes for himself regardless of what others have to say. Coming in number 5, living with paparazzi. Strangers documenting your every move since birth can definitely get really exhausting, especially if there's bad press and stories coming out that are not completely accurate. This reveal may not come as much of a shocker because of the high status this family has kept for generations, but it is definitely interesting to watch Harry vocalize his dislike for this part of his life that has constantly been relevant in a lot of the things he chooses to do. Being born into the life is so frustrating for so many people. Being chased by strangers who want to document your every move for some extra cash is definitely not for the weak. We find out that royals are told not to react to the cameras, not to feed into the frenzy, and that deals are made. The royals will pose for certain photos in exchange for being left alone for some time. But he states the obvious, not all the photographers live up to that deal, with some continuing to chase the royals down after the agreed upon pictures. There's some footage where young Harry, brother William, and cousins Eugenie and Beatrice are trotted out onto the ski slopes to answer questions and pose endlessly for the same photo over and over. I personally would hate having to stop doing what I'm doing just to pose for a bunch of money hungry photographers who are watching my every move. That sounds so annoying. Once Megan comes on the scene, photographers pay her neighbors to put a camera on their house pointed into Megan's yard. And when Megan tries to be friendly to the photographers early on, Harry tells her she can't do that because it gives them ammunition to claim that she enjoys the constant attention. What an exhausting life. Being royal is much more than the royal wave and fancy palace. Who would have thought it? Speaking of cameras, who would have thought it's not just an on-screen persona? Counting down to the fourth greatest reveal, we find out the royals behave just as formally on screen as they do when there are no cameras on them. So now I'm wondering, are they out here greeting each other with the royal wave every time they see each other? Meghan recalls a time when Prince William and Duchess Kate had come over and Meghan greeted them with a hug. She was in her own house walking around barefoot with ripped jeans on. Isn't that insane? She didn't necessarily say it was an uncomfortable greeting, but it was definitely insinuated the way she explained the encounter. She learned that the royals don't let their hair down and relax once behind closed doors. I can't imagine being that formal all the time. It just seems like a lot of work, especially when I want to just goof off with my friends. If I was a royal, I know for a fact that would be one of the hardest things for me to adjust to. Just proper clothing on all day, every day, speaking to my family and friends like I'm doing a job interview could not be me. 
Meghan also revealed that she never wore color around the royals and opted for muted tones because she wanted to make sure she fit in, while also avoiding wearing the same colors that other members of the family would wear. I mean, regardless, she always looked great, but it's interesting to see that this is something she actively has to think about when getting dressed for family events. The infamous curtsy part of the English culture is an odd thing to think about for people unfamiliar with English traditions. Meghan being born and raised in America was the same way until she found out she was supposed to curtsy when she was going to meet the Queen. What she find out was going to happen on her way over there? Imagine you're in the car with your fiancé and they casually drop the fact you're about to meet the Queen of England, who is also their grandmother. I need at least a week's notice in advance, so props to Meghan for her attempt to curtsy for the Queen. The first impression is the most important, so clearly Meghan had to have done something right, which got the approval of the Queen to marry Prince Harry. In one of the episodes, we see Meghan recalling the whole thing and doing a dramatic remake of her curtsy to the Queen, which she found quite amusing. Harry, on the other hand, was not laughing with her. On to the second biggest reveal, Meghan's family ties. During an interview with Meg's mother, Doria Ragland, we find out that Meghan's father, Thomas, and half-sister Samantha are not as close to them. Samantha is described as someone who barely knows Meg but claims she raised her. Samantha's daughter, Ashley, is interviewed and refers to Samantha as her biological mother and says she was raised by her grandparents. Meghan admits that they didn't invite Ashley to the wedding despite being close because it would look bad that they were inviting her but snubbing Ashley's mom. Yikes, talk about some family drama. The Duchess also revealed that it was a difficult decision for her to make because she is close to her niece, and she even made the effort to call her in advance to let her know why this decision had to be made. Rough. We get a point of view from her niece Ashley, who feels quite hurt about the whole thing as she recalls the moment. She says that she understood where it was coming from, but to know it was because of her mother that her relationship with her aunt was impacted is really hard to deal with. I'd be her too. Meghan also revealed that her father did not tell her he would not attend their ceremony, and found out from TMZ. That is the worst possible way to find out, and also probably the most humiliating. This family drama is just getting juicier and juicier, and I need to know what's going down in the second part of the series. On to the last, the biggest reveal in the docuseries has to be the royal proposal. The prince took Meghan to a garden near his cottage at Kensington Palace and got down on one knee on top of a blanket with a ton of candles surrounding him. If you want to see the moment, check the docuseries because they provided pictures of the cute and intimate proposal. The moment wasn't a complete surprise for Meghan because she was tipped off by the fact that he popped a bottle of champagne, which led her to call her friend to share the excitement. But it still is a wild thing to find out a whole prince wants to marry you. Starting off with number 10, as a royal and someone with a solid acting career, it is interesting to see this royal couple ranked as D-list celebrities. That's right, not even the royals can hang. Am I the only one who finds it crazy that as royals these two aren't even A-list? Prince Harry and Meghan Markle are not yet considered A-list celebrities since they still haven't been invited to Barack Obama's 60th birthday, according to a royal expert. The former US president turned 60 in August, but their absence from his milestone celebration appears to be a telling sign that the Sussexes aren't as famous as they'd perhaps like to be. Speaking at the Henley Literary Festival, royal biographer Tina Brown said it's not very pleasant to be a D-list celebrity who for them doesn't have enough money. It's a wholly different game to be with those super rich people. Regardless of the reasons they made their decision to leave, it was hard to see this once loved couple set themselves up to become one of the most problematic and hated people. That is an insane way to change your life. In number 9, it was a known fact that many did sympathize with the Sussexes' complaints about their cold reception in Britain and a few royal protocols that did not sit well with them. But their latest accusations against the palace and the press feel wild and over the top, which is not doing them any favors in the opinions polls either. According to sources, the Sussexes are now among the most unpopular public figures in Britain. I know, shocking, right? The couple have a net rating of negative 26. Harry's ratings, according to YouGov, have crashed by 13 points since the documentary to negative 26, while Meghan's are reaching negative 39. The only royal who is more disliked than both is Prince Andrew. Meanwhile, William and Catherine, the Prince and Princess of Wales, enjoy net ratings of plus 62 and plus 57, respectively. Props to them! 
Fox News columnist Lee Cohen suggested Meghan and Harry are on track to be more hated than the Duke of Windsor and Wallace Simpson. Cohen said, like the Windsors before them, the Sussexes have fallen out of favor in Britain for their indecorous behavior. But while the Duke of Windsor let his people down by being irresponsible, he and his wife did not seek the spotlight in any meaningful way, nor did they exist as the Sussexes seem to, hell-bent to destroy the monarchy. Harry didn't seem to have any problems throwing his brother, father, and even grandmother, the recently departed queen, under a big red double-decker London bus. But can you blame him? Not since Princess Diana, Harry's mother, gave her infamous interview in 1995 in which she explosively revealed, there were three of us in this marriage so it was a bit crowded, has someone tried to cause this much damage to the royal family. In number 8, the attempts to portray Meghan as the innocent victim who gave up her life to be a multi-millionaire royal duchess living in a $15 million mansion fell short of what they were hoping for, that Harry and Meg need to leave this country to avoid tragedy. After the release of their Netflix docuseries, are we really surprised to find out that this couple may have made matters worse for themselves? I mean, you're asking for attention at this point. To start, the point of this doc was probably to show them as victims of some tragedy, but when their lives were starting to become exposed, a whole lot of people started looking at this couple differently. Because at that point, it's like, what exactly are you making a six-part series for if the things mentioned in it are not credible? According to the series, Meghan was shocked to discover that joining the royals wasn't like the Prince's Diaries. Now there's a surprise. She claimed she had gotten no lessons in etiquette, wasn't taught to curtsy, and was caught off guard when she had to do so at a surprise first meeting with the late Queen Elizabeth II. Like someone give Meg the royal lessons. This contradicts reports that the Queen suggested Sophie, the Countess of Wessex, might be able to help her ease into royal life. So who here is lying? Given the deep rift between Buckingham Palace and the Sussexes, there won't be any royal talking head in the series, not even Princess Eugenie, the one member of the firm the Sussexes are still on good terms with. Vogue editor Edward Enenfull isn't involved in the project despite being on good terms with the couple, it has been claimed. Apparently Meghan and Harry, the fifth in line to the throne, were surprised there was a hierarchy within the monarchy. As someone who's been part of a long line of royals, their shock at how the monarchy works is pretty comical because what do you mean it's shocking that there is a hierarchy? Let's be serious for one second Harry and Meghan. It makes this couple look kind of pathetic because you claim you want to live a more normal private life and while I agree that no one should have their privacy invaded, doing all that just for a more controlled media narrative where you can be in charge of the story just to get caught for lying is just a little embarrassing. What do you guys think? Moving into number 7, their humble cottage. When Meghan and Harry left the royal family, they really left. Now they have settled in LA with no regards to living up to that lifestyle. In Montecito, where they live in their $14 million mansion, is a humble cottage compared to what these other people have. I mean, $14 million is still a lot, but anyway. Word on the street is that Harry's tell-all biography may never be published. Even though they've taken all this money and Harry has made this book deal where he's supposed to spill everything about his horrible life as a royal, he might be having second thoughts because he understands there is no way back if he publishes it. Better think long and hard about this one, Harry. Royal biographer Tina Brown stated that the window is beginning to close but always thought at some point a deal would be made and Charles would have to pay back the advance to stop Harry from writing this book. Brown was one of the last people to see Diana before she passed away at a lunch in New York in the summer of 1997. When asked what advice she'd believe Diana would have given to her son if she were alive today, Brown said the princess would have advised him to return to the family fold. Didn't see that coming. What do you think Harry should do? Comment down below. In number 6, it's pretty obvious that Prince Harry will not become king now. Even though the chances were already slim after stepping down, it is most definitely out of the question that we'd see this couple earn the royal titles as king and queen of England. Damn, y'all really dropped the bag. After creating a lot of drama which led to a lot of backlash, 
The surprising news was followed by a statement addressing why they will no longer be using their titles and walking away. To summarize it, they wanted to transition into a progressive role and work to become financially independent while continuing to support the Queen from a distance. After their bold and controversial statement, they received a substantial sum from King Charles to help make their transition easier, but the funding stopped in the summer of 2020. Damn, you guys got cut off just like that? Now that they've been cut off from any financial support from the royals, the lavish lifestyle might be a little harder to keep up with. Fifth on today's top 10, remember when Meghan used to act? She may say she has retired, but all the drama that has been following her ironically seems like an act in itself. The most LA thing to do, Meghan now hosts a podcast called Archetypes, where she's joined by other famous guests such as Mariah Carey, Serena Williams, and Paris Hilton. Okay, but she's still a D-lister? That's kind of embarrassing. She used to run a successful lifestyle blog, The Tig, which she shut down after getting engaged. The blog made her an estimated $80,000 a year from sponsorships and endorsement deals. Okay, I see you, Meg. Back when the couple made the decision to leave, Megan signed a voiceover deal with Disney and a contribution of her salary was given to wildlife charity Elephants Without Borders. Megan's net worth before retiring was around $5 million, making $50,000 each episode for her role on Suits and a combined $360,000 from her roles in the movies she'd done back in 2010. Back when she was still living at the palace, the royals suggested that she shouldn't need to give up her acting career fully, but she insisted on leaving. From Hollywood to royal, and now just hated by the public? That's a huge downgrade. I wonder if she regrets that move, or if she would ever consider picking up where she left off. Do you see Meg going back to acting? Let me know in the comments. Counting down to number 4, Harry was stripped of his military titles, spending a lot of his life serving in the military to losing the title passed on to him from his grandfather Prince Philip. Another role he will no longer serve is as Commodore in Chief for small ships and diving in the Royal Navy. I think we can agree that's probably for the best. Meghan had to surrender her patronage of the National Theatre, but is able to keep her small private patronages which offer coaching to unemployed women. Harry will also be able to keep a number of private patronages including for a sporting competition for wounded service personnel that he had founded. So essentially, they didn't lose everything, but it sure seems like it. For one, their reputation is damaged. They don't have the support of a lot of people in the UK, and after their docuseries, Americans also feel a way about this couple. So really, it does sound like they keep digging themselves a deeper hole. Tina Brown has made comments about Meghan's house hunting and said that they live in a humble cottage compared to their neighbors. The Duchess is looking into purchasing another home, not as bougie as the ones owned by super rich A-listers like Oprah Winfrey or Elon Musk. Apparently, Meghan and Harry's estimated net worth is about $22 million, compared to Tyler Perry who hosted the royal couple while they were moving to the US, has an approximated net worth of $880 million. So in comparison, the royal couple are are Hollywood poor. Damn, y'all are broke broke. I'm just kidding, but damn, they aren't even fitting in Hollywood. Coming down to number two, trademark drama. Following their decision to step down, the palace announced that the couple's personal foundation, Sussex Royal, the foundation of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, was not allowed to use the term Sussex Royal. Damn, they said you cannot have the clout. After the trademark applications were removed, they did release a statement saying that they do not intend to use the term royal after their transition in the spring of 2020. But of course, there was a lot of back and forth because they were not allowed to have the term Sussex Royal anymore. I mean, what did you expect Harry and Meg? You aren't working royals, so it wouldn't even make sense to have that term in the name of your foundation. Just like most of the royal drama we've been discussing, this one is really juicy because the late queen was pretty disappointed that the couple was bringing all this unnecessary and unwanted attention to the family. Well, to say the least, the queen was not pleased with them. If you piss off the queen, you should definitely be careful of what your next moves are going to be. Like, come on guys, if you want no attention, don't do so much to get it. Last but not least, number one on our list. Let's summarize everything this royal couple has lost on their way out of the palace. We already know they have not been receiving any royal funds. As working royals, they used to receive 95% of their annual income from Harry's father. That's an insane bag to fumble, but somehow they managed to not only lose that, but much more. 
The security arrangements were also taken back. They lost a lot of their royal titles, the support of their family, and even fans who were once sympathetic to their situation. They were unable to keep the Frogmore Cottage, which was gifted by the late queen when they got married, which they offered to repay after they had stepped down. Not to mention, they lost respect from a lot of people who looked up to them during their time as royals. Their reputation has become very questionable after the allegations that have come out about them lying in the Oprah interview and their docuseries. Their ratings just keep on dropping. Yikes. Anything else I missed? Do we think this couple is digging their own grave? As hard as it clearly seems for this couple to stay in the shadows, that might be their best bet for now. But then again, how else would they plan on making their money if they aren't finding all these easy cash grabs, which are in turn ruining their reputation? I guess we'll find out if Harry decides to continue exploiting the royal family by making another project about the family. When it comes to expressing unfiltered opinions, Trump is definitely one person we will hear from. The businessman and former US president had some words to say about Merkel, calling her disrespectful to the queen and even stating that he is not a fan of hers. Trump does not shy away from making sure everyone knows his feelings towards the Duchess of Sussex. But who says Meg even likes you, Trump? Maybe stick to business and stay out the politics. <laughs> She is trying to do things that I think are very inappropriate, said Trump. We get the picture, Donald. You're not cool with the Duchess and you want everyone to know. You may be surprised to find out their beef predates her marriage to the prince. Back in 2016, Meghan publicly admitted that she will not be voting to make America great again because of all the misogyny. Who knows, maybe Trump has been bitter about the former actress ever since then. The feud continued when Harry and Meghan moved to the US in 2020. Trump tweeted, the US will not pay for the security protection, they must pay, though they had already made private security arrangements. Several months later, the couple released a thinly veiled endorsement of Joe Biden, to which Trump responded during a White House briefing. I'm not a fan of hers. I wish a lot of luck to Harry because he's going to need it. Wow, Trump caught some serious feelings. In his interview with Pierce Morgan, who has his own history with Merkel, Trump suggests that if it were in his power, he would do even more to penalize the couple for rejecting royal life. It's a good thing that Trump does not have that kind of power. Or any power at all. Yikes. Number 9 on our list of celebrities who hate Meghan is Pierce Morgan. We all know the British journalist has had quite the history with Markle, and in more recent times, the news has always felt like one-sided beef where Morgan goes out of his way to hate on everything the Duchess does. Pierce, you're sounding like a real fan right now. Give Meg some room to breathe. Many have made note of this weird obsession Morgan seems to have. In fact, Google Trends shows many are even asking, did Meghan Markle and Pierce Morgan date? Some history on the two that might help to explain their complicated relationship. With their first time meeting in 2016, after she messaged him saying she was a fan of his, the pair developed a virtual friendship before meeting for a drink in London when Meghan visited the UK to watch Serena Williams at Wimbledon. We had two hours in the pub. She had a couple of dirty martinis and pints. We got on brilliantly. Then I put her in a cab, and it turns out it was the cab that took her to a party where she met Prince Harry. The next night they had a solo dinner, and that was the last I ever heard from Meghan Markle. I never heard from her again. Meghan Markle ghosted me. It seems as if he was hurt that someone he had developed a friendship with was no longer interested. Did Meghan lead Pierce on, or did he just not get the friend zone? Comment down below. And yet, it was the fact that Meghan distanced herself from Pierce after meeting Harry that made him conclude she isn't a genuine person. I really liked her, that's why it hurts, he said. I just think she's a slight social climber, I'm afraid. Hold up though, can we just really take in this possible relationship? I think Meghan might have broken Pierce's heart. Now that's some tea. Sounds like rejection hit Pierce hard for him to continue going out of his way to say nasty things about Meg. On to number 8, Meg's estranged dad, Thomas Merkel. Thomas, an ex-Hollywood lighting director, has spoken about her daughter's relationship publicly and described their decision to walk away from the royals as embarrassing. Damn, you know it's bad when even your family is not on your side. Their relationship soured in the run-up to their 2018 Windsor Castle wedding when he admitted to agreeing to stage pictures of himself. Thomas wasn't seen at the nuptials and he didn't walk his daughter down the aisle either. After skipping the wedding, he repeatedly slammed the royal family in the press, once comparing his daughter's in-laws to a cult. Meghan and her father no longer speak. 
Damn, do you think Thomas is keeping some things quiet? Or do you think Megan only cares about her status? Comment down below. Seven on our list, competing to being the biggest hater in the family, Megan's sister Samantha doesn't seem to have many good things to say about Megan after she became the Duchess of Sussex. Wow, the whole family. Meg girl, what is you doing? Her strained relationship with her half-sister, Samantha Markle, has been visible for many to see, as Sam compared Meghan to Cruella de Vil in August 2018 and publicly sided with their dad while shading the royal couple's exit. Talk about living in someone's head rent-free. The sister is the main reason Meghan did not invite her niece to the royal wedding. She would have felt odd inviting her niece and sister's daughter because she knew she didn't want her half-sister Samantha there. Honestly, I wouldn't too if they were seeing these kinds of things behind me publicly. Like, her sister couldn't keep it behind closed doors? Now that sounds a little snake to me. Samantha released a book, The Diary of Princess Pushy's Sister Part 1 in February 2021. In addition to sharing alleged stories about their childhood, she claimed that Meghan changed when she met Harry. Damn, is Meghan getting a taste of her own medicine? I guess exposing secrets to the media is something they both have in common. Even though we may not ever know the whole truth, it's tough to see this family bring their drama into the media for the public to see. Harry and Meghan both seem to have unresolved tension with their families. Do we think they'll ever make up again? Six on our list, Wendy Williams. The talk show host is another person we can rely on for unfiltered opinions. When it comes to talking about the Duchess, Wendy has not been holding back from making comments about the couple soon after it was revealed that they were dating. On her show, Wendy had predicted the pair would break up, saying, there's way too much drama with her and this will not work out. Yikes, I guess we're still waiting to see if this prediction was accurate, but so far, it doesn't seem so accurate considering they now have two kids. Like, what's with all the negativity, Wendy? Let them do their thing. In 2017, Wendy told her audience that the actress was a bit of a wild card because she goes from being the deal or no deal girl to a random princess. According to Wendy, all Meg is doing is looking for a game. Do you think this is true or is Wendy jealous? Because she's sounding like a fan talking about Megan this much. While many <coughs> haters might agree with her, Meg does seem to be doing well for herself and ignoring the criticism and hate she gets. Good for her. Counting down to number five, Erin Foster. Regularly recognized for blasting celebrities by using her Instagram as an outlet, this time Megan was at the receiving end of many of these posts. Sounds like someone has too much time on their hands. In an effort to cast shade on Megan's past life and where she really came from, Erin posted a photo of Megan's appearance on Deal or No Deal and captioned it with the words, never forget. Foster wants to make sure everyone else catches a glimpse of what Megan was all about before her royal days began. That's kind of weird, Erin. Let's dig into your past. On another occasion, she posted another image of Meghan holding a briefcase from the same show and added an even more rude caption that read, This briefcase is filled with my plans to be famous. Add Erin to the list of people who think of Meg as a fame-hungry social climber. Do you agree with her? Moving on to fourth on the list, Meg seems to find herself having intimate relationships with people who end up hating her afterwards. It's not looking too good for you, girl. Ex-husband producer Trevor Engelson never shared his feelings towards his royal ex-wife. However, in a book released by royal biographer Andrew Morton called Megan, a Hollywood Princess, Trevor does not hold back with his alleged dislike for his ex-wife. According to the book, Trevor was initially elated about marrying Meghan, but eventually started feeling as if the feelings were not completely reciprocated. Meghan allegedly mailed her wedding ring back to Trevor out of the blue after two years of marriage. Wow, Meg really feels no ways. She's a savage. Number three, Katie Hopkins, scathing tirade in full, which features an order from her to Meghan to leave our royal family alone, with her adding that she and other critics of the former Suits actress could see trouble coming a mile off. From the start of her relationship with Prince Harry and claiming she has always been desperate to be a celebrity. Wow, is this true, Meg? She has accused Meghan of dressing badly and also called her the biggest hypocrite. Fans took to social media to criticize her comments, but Ms. Hopkins hit back. Nah, that's just unnecessary. Why you gotta insult what she wears? She told Mirror Online, British taxpayers are sick and tired of the hypocrisy of Meghan Markle, preaching ecotosh whilst taking private jets, and demanding privacy whilst prostituting her fame on social media. 
She expressed her disgust by Meghan's non-royal attitude by bashing her and calling her a budget princess die with an Oscar-winning innocent face. At one point, Prince Harry made a plea for the media to respect his girlfriend's privacy, to which Katie chimed in aggressively and commented about how Meghan should stop posting so much on social media if she valued her privacy so much. Didn't they just release that Netflix docuseries? Anyway... Amy Schumer threw some very shady shade at the royals. As you can tell, other celebrities were abrasively vocal about their disdain for Meghan Markle. Amy took a more sly approach and spoke to Sydney's Fitzy and Whippa radio show about the wedding. She talked about how Meghan's wedding was not really hers and joked about how she had to greet foreign delegates on her big day, people that she had never met or seen before. She made some underhanded comments about how this must be a bad experience for Meghan, but it's likely that had Amy been on the list of guests, she maybe, just maybe, would have attended this royal affair. Is Amy even a comedian? Sorry, I'm getting off topic. Schumer has joked about following the royal couple's footsteps after their decision to step back as senior members of the royal family was announced. Alongside a photo of her husband Chris Fisher pushing her on a beach wheelchair, Schumer wrote on Instagram, Chris and I are formally stepping down from our royal duties. Ha, <laughs> good one Amy. Schumer has previously made a crack about Meghan, back when she and the former actress were both expecting their first child. In a 2018 video segment, the comedian jokingly called Meghan her nemesis. Maybe that's not so much a joke anymore. Number one on the list, once part of the royal family, Prince Andrew. Andrew has been involved in numerous scandals, so many are coming to question why it is that Meghan is the one to receive bad media press, but the former Duke of York, who has been involved in far more problematic issues, has not been causing as much conversation. As one of the late Queen's sons, Andrew managed to lose all his titles and was stripped of his military associations. Prince Andrew has been kicked out of Buckingham Palace by his brother King Charles, according to reports. A source told The Sun, any presence at the palace is officially over. The king has made it clear he isn't a working royal, he's on his own. The press we see on Andrew is nowhere near as ruthless as what we see on Meghan, who moved out because she was not able to manage the royal life. What can he really say about Meghan when he has no place to judge? Whether it is controversies or just relationship drama, Meghan continues to be in the spotlight, criticized by many. Starting off with number 10, we have all seen or at least heard about the six-part Netflix docuseries Harry and Meghan. And let me tell you, the tea on these two, especially Meg, is hotter than ever. While it was back in 2020 that the couple stepped down from the throne to live a life away from their royal responsibilities, to have a quiet and normal life, we can't help but question why everything they've been doing is the exact opposite of quiet. The internet has been up in flames over Meghan's behavior in the docuseries and some even feel as if it should just be titled Meghan because of her dramatic approach to topics that some do not feel deserved a whole series, especially if they wanted a life away from the press and media. Here's an extensive list of times where Meghan simply has broken royal protocols for whatever reason. She has worn dresses of a shorter length than other royal members usually wear. The couple's wedding was not on a weekday, which is royal tradition, while on their South African tour, the couple made a request to only be referred to as Harry and Meghan instead of as their royal titles. The two of them are regularly seen showing PDA, such as hugging and holding hands in photographs taken by paparazzi. She wore Dior to Archie's christening even though the royal mother typically wears a piece by a British designer. The couple announced baby Archie's birth on Instagram, even though traditionally the news of a royal baby is shared on a ceremonial easel outside of Buckingham Palace. It is highly unusual for a royal to do so, but she hasn't worn panties Hose more than once. There are images of her entering the car before the Queen too. Another rule part of the royal family is not to voice any political views, but of course, Meghan has done that as well. As tiring as it was to list out all the times Meghan has done something different than what is usually part of the royal traditions, or just unofficial rules, it makes us question Meghan's efforts to fit into the royals as she's claimed to do. A bombshell report shed light on Meghan and Harry's supposed tempers leading up to their wedding day. Body language experts have revealed that Meghan's behaviors and actions show her as a manipulative narcissist who is using Harry's vulnerability against him and controlling him to do everything she wants. Others believe she wanted to step away from the royals because she was unable to control the narrative of the British press. 
That is some drama. Let me know in the comments below if you agree. In an astonishing allegation, the queen was forced to step in and pull Meghan and Harry in line after Meghan was told she couldn't wear the original tiara she'd picked up from the queen's collection. Meghan had her heart set on this tiara with emeralds and Prince Harry hit the roof when they were told it was impossible for her to wear it. As the origins of the tiara could not be 100% confirmed, the queen apparently would not loan it out and it did not go down well. Apparently, there was a very heated exchange where the queen spoke to Harry about Meghan not being able to have whatever she wants. She also had to remind him that Meghan gets a tiara given by her. The message from the queen was very much that Meghan needed to think about how she speaks to staff members and be careful to follow family protocols. We all know Meghan was an actress before she stepped down to become an activist and Duchess of Sussex. So we can't help but wonder why her reasoning to step down from royalty had to do with an overwhelming amount of media attention when she was subject to that throughout her acting career. What are your thoughts on this? Is it valid or do you think she's lying or hiding something? Another thing I can't help but wonder is why she wanted to step away from the royal responsibilities if she still continues to use her title as Duchess of Sussex, and along with that had to involve her husband Prince Harry into stepping down from his royal bloodline. Is it a manipulation tactic or is it love? Will we ever find out? Now she may say she has called it quits on her acting career, but this just might be her biggest act of them all. As many question whether she's playing the victim, it only makes sense for an actor to put on a show for the public whether they like it or not. It seems as if Meghan had not gotten the message. Three royal aides have resigned since Meghan and Harry were married in May 2018. In December 2018, it was announced that Samantha Cohen, private secretary to Harry and Meghan, would leave their service in British Spring 2019 after the birth of the couple's royal baby. Samantha has worked with the royal family for 17 years and was reminisced as being a huge loss for the family. Samantha, the former royal aide, served as assistant private secretary and communications secretary to the queen and was one of her most trusted members of staff. In October 2018, another palace aide and assistant quit for the same reason. She reportedly put off staff with her rumored routine of getting up at 5 a.m. and bombarding aides with texts and her eyebrow raising fashion. Counting down to seventh on the list, many people are starting to believe Meghan's actions are more performative than true advocacy. If you wanna go and do something to help an underdeveloped region, is it necessary to bring cameras with you to record you doing a good deed? Meghan might be onto something and we're starting to think the bigger picture is to show people that she's a good person who helps others while simultaneously using her status to get her way. Other times the cameras have been an issue is during the docuseries when the couple was called out for using a royal family approved picture of them walking out to prove a point about them being hounded by paparazzi. On top of all this, Harry drew a comparison between Meg and his mother, the late Princess Diana. This obviously caused outrage, with some calling the comparison disgraceful and disrespectful. But the tea is that the use of these clips has led several former royal aides to hit out at Harry and Meghan. According to The Telegraph, who say the couple did not experience any incidents of press intrusion in any way comparable to Diana. Instead, they believe the pair are unfairly equating gossip and negative press with the type of paparazzi hounding which regularly followed her. Six on the list, Meghan mocking the royal traditions. Now as many know, there is a scene in the series that shows Meghan doing an overly dramatic take of the royal curtsy she was to do when she met the Queen. As she's laughing it up, look over to Harry and notice his reaction. He's staring at her as if he's annoyed with her mocking something that is part of his tradition. Interesting. Seeing as he is uncomfy with the mockery, it's definitely not a good look for Meghan at all. Other than the mockery, there have been several instances where Meghan chose to do what she preferred rather than respecting the rules of the royal family. Meghan's critics would say it was presumptuous of her to think that the centuries-old monarchy would suddenly change up its operations because of a newcomer. Meghan's not known to be someone who's going to change herself just to please the people around her. There was a conversation where Meghan had to be reminded that she and Harry were not as high on the royal hierarchy as William and Kate Middleton, because Harry is only sixth in line to the throne, while William one day will become king. One of Meghan's journalist friends, Omid Scobie, also proved some suspicions people may have had about her. The observations align with views offered by other authors and royal reporters interviewed for the ITV documentary. These observations also follow reports that allege that Meghan bullied palace staff 
prompting a Buckingham Palace investigation. Meghan, now living with Harry in California, has strongly denied the allegations, saying she was a victim of a smear campaign ahead of her and Harry's bombshell interview with Oprah Winfrey in March. Now, if your own friend is confirming some of these suspicions that are pointing to you being different than what you claim, it really does not come off as a good look. Within an interview with Oprah, Meghan claims she knew nothing about the life she was set to live with the love of her life, Prince Harry. According to a well-placed source, that was, wait for it, a blatant lie. Prince Harry and Brother William's private secretary at the time had created an organized folder with information and contacts to help Meghan in this transition into royal life. But clearly, she didn't care to learn any of it, and on top of that, accused the palace of not directing her through this journey. Sounds like a you problem, Meghan. Another lie she had orchestrated was about not having her niece invited to the wedding, which she said was guidance through the palace, when in reality, the press team was desperate for Meghan to have more family and friends at the wedding, but she simply didn't want Ashley, her niece, exposed to the media. Because of all the times Meghan opted out to avoid telling the truth, the question now is how much will the couple's credibility suffer in the future now? As we continue to spill the tea, here's number four on the list. After the infamous Oprah interview dropped back in 2021, the couple has been accused of prolific lying. With lies being told, people can't help but wonder what is the truth and what is being exaggerated. After getting an award for heroism, royal expert Angela Levin has spoken about how they did not deserve it because of the things that were said in the interview. If you haven't watched the interview, there has been endless criticism on many things that have happened throughout the interview, from questionable body language to overdramatic recalls of personal situations. She brought up how she hasn't gotten any help with her mental health, which many were also quick to call out by saying that was fake news. I mean, Megan, how many times do you plan on talking about your life that you so badly want to keep private and to yourself? Third on the list is the very natural feeling for Megan to have this status and media attention while taking it for granted. Since she, along with the rest of the world, knows that Harry has vocalized his dislike in the media attention, there are theories that Megan is low-key eating it up. To be fair, Prince Harry has gotten much more attention throughout his life, so she has to remain on the same page as Harry and make sure the public can see she isn't liking it either when, let's be real, we all know the real tea. I mean, why else could you possibly be making the news as often as you do if you didn't like it? In number two, we have the fact that Meghan is simply American. A lot of the English folk do not want to welcome her into the royal hierarchy because of her non-English blood. As funny as that is, it does make sense for the English people to continue wanting the throne to remain English. But on top of that, Meghan's actions have shown that she does feel entitled to more than she is getting because of her position in the hierarchy. Speaking of the prince, the number one way Meghan has used her status to get her way on the list is her relationship with Prince Harry for reasons related to status more than love. Now, although we don't 100% know about the relationship or what happens behind closed doors, the general assumptions seem to be about Meghan using her newly achieved status to try and get her way while playing the victim card. Yikes, this is getting too hot to handle now. When it comes to the Duchess of Sussex, there seems to be no boundaries. Critics have all felt enormously free to make statements about how she supposedly used her acting skills and other ways to trap Harry, and used him as a stepping stone for her own ambition of becoming rich, famous, and even someday a politician. Some believe she is just faking being in love for an ulterior motive, while others believe she ditched her whole family and made Harry split up and isolate himself from his brother, Prince William, and the rest of the royal family. Hold on, there's more. She's also accused of commercializing and using the royals, being an opportunist, and many more. As long as this list is, do you think these are all valid points? Now obviously we don't know the woman at all, but the amount of negative news we can easily find on her makes us that much more curious because we want to know. How much of it is true? Is Meghan Markle milking stories for some attention? What do you think? Number 10, the journal. Meghan Markle has an individual journal loaded with unstable imperial mysteries that could release ruin on the English regal family, assuming she chooses to distribute them. According to a source close to the Duchess of Sussex, when Meghan stayed with the royals in the UK, she actually kept a personal journal as an insurance policy against them. According to the insider, although Harry and Meghan were instructed to disregard newspaper 
newspapers and social media, staff would occasionally utter the phrase, so sorry about what was written the other day, which would send Megan into a rage. She wrote it all in her diary as an insurance policy. If it ever saw the light of day, it would surely be dynamite. Additionally, they asserted by the sounds of it, this journal was rediscovered this summer, boxed up, and shipped back to Montecito. The remarks came just a few days after Megan revealed in a new in-depth interview with The Cut that she actually found her journal in her UK home, Frogmore Cottage, when she visited for the Queen's Jubilee. This revelation shocked the entire UK and the royal family. Number 9. Social Climber Kundi said she and Meghan met at a 2013 charity gala the same year that the Suits actress ended her two-year marriage to producer Trevor Engelson. Meg asked Kundi if she knew any famous guys and also stated that she's single and loves Englishmen. According to Kundi, Meghan also explained that she could only be in Suits for so long and that Hollywood was a really brutal place. She had not made a breakthrough and said she would feel at home in London. Kendi said Megan set her sights on the TV show Made in Chelsea, a series that chronicles the lives of affluent young people living in London. Megan wanted to be part of the Chelsea crowd both on and off screen. She worked hard to get in with that crowd, Kendi added. Through these circles, she eventually became acquainted with people who were friends with Harry, according to the Daily Mail. So is Meg a social climber or did this all just happen to be a coincidence? What do you think? On to number 8, unapproved pics. At the peak of all the attention from the media, the couple escaped the public's interest by hiding out with their friends Ben and Jessica Mulroney for a few days. Prince Harry and Ben bonded over their shared backgrounds. Ben told stories about Prince Harry's late mother Diana, who stayed with his family when she was touring Canada. During that visit, she ventured up to Ben's nursery to play with him and his siblings. By November, Markle took a hiatus from Suits to fly to London. Around this time, stills from her show Suits were released, showing the actress's first raunchy love scene. Prince Harry was upset by these photographs and asked Kensington Palace's press secretary to issue the official statement protecting Markle, which was ultimately criticized by the British press. Some thought Prince Harry had been too impulsive while others believed the public was entitled to know what was going on with the royal family, but what do you think? Number 7. Avoiding unflattering stories. The general consensus is that Harry and Meghan are hoping to intimidate the press into agreeing to avoid unflattering stories about the Sussexes, such as their extensive use of private planes while supposedly advocating for the environment. Of course, they may just want to pay out for a settlement. The British press has paid out many times in the past, including suits brought by the Cambridges and Prince Charles just recently and paid out a few settlements related to the phone hacking suit. Still, a 15-year-old case seems to be an odd way to get rich, particularly when the phone hacking affected Prince William so much more than Prince Harry. Number 6, Megan ditching friends for royal status. Has she been ditching her friends for royal status? A former friend and colleague who said Meghan ghosted her was Gina Nelthorpe Crown, who found the future Duchess to be hugely charismatic when they first met in 2014. Gina told the Daily Mail she soon became both Meghan's agent and friend. She said Meghan gushed to her about how she and Prince Harry were going to change the world after the two took a romantic trip to Botswana in 2016. Gina says she last heard from Meghan when the future Duchess told her she was giving up her career and terminating their contract. Meghan likes to move on, Nelthorpe Crown told the Daily Mail. Ouch, Meghan felt no type of way about letting go of her former friends. I mean, it could have just been professional, but it seems as if a couple people have claimed that she cut them off as soon as she and Harry became serious. But at the same time, if Meghan knew these people would share her business, then it would only be safer and easier for her to keep her distance from them. Clearly, they're still talking about her and airing out her past even though she doesn't talk to them anymore. Did the Duchess make the right decision? Drop your thoughts in the comments. Number five, what is a couple hiding? Many observers are guessing that Harry and Meghan have gone so hard against the press at this inopportune time, they have completely negated whatever good publicity they got from their trip to Africa because they have something to allegedly hide. Perhaps, they say, a big story is about to break and Meghan and Harry are trying to inform the outlet in advance that they're lawsuit happy. Enough people are following the Sussexes so it's pretty easy to guess what they might be trying to suppress. What do you think? Are they trying to keep something from us? Number 4. Rushed engagement The couple who reportedly started dating in 2016 knew each other for less than a year when Harry popped the question. And it happened at least 4 months prior to their announcement. This would mean that Meghan had already agreed to Harry when her famous interview with Vanity Fair was published in which she confirmed that her relationship with Harry was serious. According to Lowe, the reason why the couple didn't announce their engagement earlier was that they wanted it to become a secret. However, when everyone in the royal family knew about it, the interview was in effect Meghan's big launch. She says the couple were not officially engaged, though. 
Though everyone in Kensington Palace knew they had been privately engaged since the late summer, but this was Meghan putting herself out there in a confident, proactive way. Number three, H's past lovers. As much as they say you can't change the past, it seems as if Meg wishes Harry could. Apparently she was fuming over Prince Harry hiding the identity of his former flames. Some things are better left unsaid, right? Prince Harry's past romances have reportedly caused Meghan immense pain and panic, as none of it was ever shared with her before. Prince Harry is known to have had a fling with 34-year-old Real Housewives of DC star Catherine O'Mani, who recently went on the record to dish over her passionate time with the Duke. However, her public admission has given rise to inside claims about Meghan's reaction. According to Closer UK, Meghan was well aware Harry had a past and that he was a serious playboy who was a big hit with the ladies back in his youth. And he has never hid that from her when they first got together. Apparently, a lot of Harry's flings weren't discussed at all during personal chats, so there's an element of Meghan reading about certain relationships and secrets he shared with other women for the very first time. Meghan probably felt blindsided with revelations about her husband that she never knew. This comes even though Harry reportedly asked her to stay relaxed on the subject, as it's difficult when the shocking affair is plastered all over the internet and covered in almost every news outlet. I mean, considering Harry is a prince, how could he not be a player? But at the same time, finding out about your husband's flings other than from him would definitely be annoying. It's almost as if Harry was hiding it from Meghan. On to number two, royals grasping for cash. Any lawsuit exposes Harry to discovery, although it apparently much more limited in the UK than it is in the US, and possibly to testifying in person. Since Harry isn't the world's biggest fellow, being forced to field questions from sharp, highly paid lawyers for the media companies could be an invitation to disaster. And on to number one, family drama. Harry's past may have been a wild ride, but a lot of the drama Meghan keeps behind her about her own family and former friends is pretty interesting. Her older half-brother Thomas Markle Jr. has claimed that he was at the lowest point of his life and claims he lost his job and home due to his sister's fame. Markle Jr. was recently evicted from his rental home in Grants Pass, Oregon and is now living in a small hotel room with his fiancée, her son, their two dogs. In an interview with the son, Markle Jr. blamed his sister's global fame for his downward spiral and claimed that he has been unable to find a new job or a new place to live due to being known as Meghan's crazy brother. Thomas's relationship with his sister has been strained for some time, with the half-siblings previously criticizing Meghan in the media and claiming that she turns her back on family and friends if she believes they are of no use to her. Meghan's fans have called Markle Jr. and Samantha opportunists, seeking to exploit Meghan's fame for their own gain. However, Markle Jr. has claimed that he has been living under a microscope since Meghan's engagement to Prince Harry in 2017 and that he has been unable to find work or secure a new place to live due to the negative attention brought on by his sister's fame. Number 10, mocking royal traditions. Now, as many know, there is a scene in their series that shows Meghan doing an overly dramatic take of the royal curtsy she was to do when she met the queen. As she is laughing it up, look over to Harry and notice his reaction. He is staring at her as if he's annoyed with her, mocking something that is part of his tradition. Sounds a little beefy to me. Seeing as he is uncomfy by the mockery, it is definitely not a good look for Meghan at all. Other than the mockery, there have been several instances where Meghan chose to do what she preferred rather than respecting the rules of the royal family. Meghan's critics would say it was presumptuous of her to think that the centuries old monarchy would suddenly change up its operations because of a newcomer. Meghan is not known to be someone who's gonna change herself just to please the people around her. There was a convo where Meghan had to be reminded that she and Harry were not as high on the royal hierarchy as William and Kate Middleton because Harry is only fifth in line to the throne while William one day will become king. Omid Scobie says, I felt they had to be reminded you're not the stars of the show here, there is a hierarchy and you don't come very high in it. One of Meghan's journalist friends, Omid Scobie, also proved some suspicions people may have had about her. The observations align with views offered by other authors and royal reporters interviewed for the ITV documentary. These observations also follow reports that allege that Meghan bullied palace staff prompting a Buckingham Palace investigation. Meghan, now living with Harry and Callie, has strongly denied the allegations, saying she was a victim of a smear campaign ahead of her and Harry's bombshell interview with Oprah. Now if your own friend is confirming some of these suspicions that are pointing to you being different than what you claim, it really does not come off too well for you. Anyway, on to number 9, lying in interviews. 
After the infamous Oprah interview dropped back in 2021, the couple has been accused of prolific lying. With lies being told about racism, among other things, people can't help but wonder what is the truth and what is being exaggerated. After getting an award for heroism, royal expert Angela Levine has spoken about how they did not deserve it because of the things they were that were said in the interview. If you haven't watched the interview yet, there have been endless criticism on many things that have happened throughout the interview, from questionable body language to overdramatic recalls of personal situations. She brought up how she hasn't gotten any help with her mental health, which many were also quick to call out by saying that was fake news. I mean, Megan, how many times do you plan on talking about your life that you so badly want to keep private and to yourself? Anyway, number eight, more lying. Within the interview with Oprah, Megan claimed she knew nothing about the life she was set to live with the love of her life, Prince Harry. According to a well-placed source, that was a blatant lie. Prince Harry and brother William's private secretary at the time had created an organized folder with information and contacts to help Meghan in this transition into royal life. But clearly she didn't care to learn any of it and on top of that, accused the palace of not directing her through this journey. Another lie she had orchestrated was about not having her niece invited to the wedding. She had said was guidance through the palace when in reality the press team was desperate for Meghan to have more family and friends at the wedding. But she simply didn't want Ashley there. Because of all the times Meghan opted out to avoid telling the truth, the question now is how much will the couple's credibility suffer in the future? Number seven, overwhelmed. Now we all know Meghan was an actress before she stepped down to become an activist and the Duchess of Sussex. So we can't help but wonder why her reasoning to step down from royalty had to do with an overwhelming amount of media attention when she was subject to that throughout her acting career. What are your thoughts on this? Is it valid or do you think she's lying or hiding something? Another thing I can't help but wonder is why she wanted to step away from the royal responsibilities if she still continues to use her title, the Duchess of Sussex. And along with that had to involve her husband, Prince Harry, into stepping down from his royal bloodline. Is it a manipulation tactic or is it love? Will we ever find out? Now she may say she has called it quits on her acting career, but this just might be her biggest act of them all. As many question whether she is playing the victim, it only makes sense for an actor to put on a show for the public, whether they like it or not. On to number six, breaking royal protocols. Here is an extensive list of times where Meghan simply has broken royal protocols for whatever reason. She has worn dresses of a shorter length than other royal members usually wear. The couple's wedding was not on a weekday, which is royal tradition. While on their South African tour, the couple made a request to only be referred to as Harry and Meghan instead of the royal titles. The two of them are regularly seen showing PDAs such as hugging and holding hands in photographs taken by paparazzi. She wore Dior to Archie's christening, even though the royal mother typically wears a piece by a British designer. The couple announced baby Archie's birth in the on the gram, even though traditionally the news of a royal baby is shared on a ceremonial easel outside of Buckingham Palace. And it's highly unusual for a royal to do so, but she hasn't worn pantyhose more than once. As tiring as it was to list a few of the times Meghan has done something different than what is usually part of the royal traditions or just unofficial rules, it makes us question Meghan's efforts to fit into the royals as she's claimed to do. Counting down to number five, complaining. During the royal tours, the smiles and nice photos covered up the behind the scenes of the royal tour, which was apparently a nightmare. This tour is an amazing time to empower others and be a good role model as a royal. It's tradition, and it's keen, for the royal family to build good relations and also good for publicity. Only issue is Meghan didn't see the importance in that and has been quoted on multiple occasions by staff for saying, I can't believe I'm not getting paid for this. Megan, you got to travel the world and be treated royally. Is that not enough? I get time is money, but if you're doing it for the man you love, wouldn't you just want to do it for him and his family instead of for personal gain? Anyway, number four, abrasive. Megan was accused of abrasive behavior towards staff members and diplomats, according to the explosive royal biography. Looking back at the Sussexes' visit to Sydney, Australia, where they received an amazing reception, Tom Bauer writes, Megan was allegedly abrasive towards her four female staff and even towards the local British diplomats. According to one report, Megan allegedly threw a cup of tea into the air. Not the tea! He continued by saying that her anger may have been partly fueled by Harry. Every night he trolled social media searching for snide comments on the internet. Every morning he and Megan turned on their phones to surf the internet. 
That doesn't sound very healthy to me. Australia, as covered in past videos, did not seem to be as fun as the couple may have hoped. Seems like they were feeling down in the down under. Number three, non good terms with the in laws. When news of Harry and Meghan's move out of Kensington Palace to strike out on their own first broke in November of 2018, the public and press came to a unanimous conclusion as to why that would be. Meghan. Everyone pointed the fingers at the new royal, suggesting her alleged difficult duchess attitude was not just reserved for the staff and had caused a feud between her and Kate. Obviously, that turned out to be untrue, and the Sussexes were expecting a baby and wanted more space than the two-bedroom apartment they lived in at Kensington Palace. Kate and Meghan always had problems. It came out in November that there was a ton of tension between the royal family as Kate and Meghan were not getting along. This meant that Harry and William weren't getting along either, and the whole family was just not seeing eye to eye. And it was really hard on everyone, especially the late Queen Elizabeth, who was actually so fed up with the drama, she made Kate and Meghan sit down and sort it out. On to number two, doing what she wants. It seems like Meghan was trying to make a point by going to vote, even though royals are forbidden to do so. After she posted a picture of her wearing a sticker indicating that she had gone to vote, it was not well received in the UK. And even though she is no longer an official member of the royal family, she's not permitted to abide by those laws, but it's definitely savage of her to do this, knowingly since she is married into the family. Many others were not surprised at this act because she has been known to be an activist and stands firmly in everything she believes in. So for her to continue being the same way and not conforming to the laws of a country she wasn't even born in isn't the worst thing in the world. And finally, number one, beneficial liar. Meghan Markle has been rumored to spin tales of drama to potentially benefit her and her husband's image, but her husband, Harry, seems to be the one who winds up dealing with the backlash. It's no secret she loves a good scandal, but when it comes to her marriage, it looks like she could use a little more discretion. Disapproving eyes are on this royal couple as they attempt to navigate through any issues they may have caused by speaking out too much or too often. Only time will tell if their union can survive Meghan's tendency to bend the truth every now and then, but needless to say, it's not an easy task for someone who married into British royalty. But that is all for today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more juicy royal updates and news on your favorite celebrities. And I'll catch you next time on The Rich Life.